I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Hello there, Marissa. Hi, how are you today? I'm terrific. How about you? I'm good. I'm feeling a little tired because last night we had our 106th annual dinner that we did. Macney celebrated, so we, we were both out late. Um, and no, I have not attended all 106. <laughs> but you've attended a lot. You probably don't even, even know how many you've attended. I don't, but I'll bet you between 25 and 30 annual dinners I attended. Yeah, that's that would be my guess. So that's a lot. Yeah, and last night you had a very important role as well. You facilitated our our uh, kind of a discussion. I don't, it feels weird calling it fireside a chat discussion. Uh, yes, it was like a fireside chat and that beautiful stickly furniture. Yes. Um, so that was fantastic. I I hope that our listeners, at least some of them, were able to be there. And I believe we should be able to get that up on Macney's website in the near future once we get that footage back. So Good. Yeah, I, I'm glad you did a shout out to Stickley because they do a beautiful job of, mm -hmm. of bringing us some furniture mm -hmm. so that we can make this look like we're literally sitting in a living room, minus mm -hmm. the fireplace, <laughs> um, and having a conversation. So last night we had a conversation with Nate and Bob Andrews of Morse Manufacturing, mm -hmm. you know, a company that's 96 years old, and and how they've transitioned to the third generation of owners, and it yeah. was fun. I love yeah. having those conversations. Yeah, I, I love listening to them, and I'm sure a lot of others do too. You do a great job facilitating those. Well, thank you. My my job's easy. <laughs> so do we? Do we also put those on a YouTube channel? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we'll do. I think we just okay. started doing that last year. So I think you're right. So if so, and last year it was a great conversation with Bill Allen and from Welch Allen and Arnie Rubenstein from mm -hmm. United Radio. Yep, that was fun. Yeah. So once we get that footage back, we will post to our YouTube channel, and um, we'll also link that on our website. Perfect. Yeah. So if anyone missed that's great. it, they can check it out. Awesome. So today we're talking about art, art and communication. Art and communications, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is, a, um, I wrote about it because I saw, I wrote it this way because I saw a quote from a former presidential speechwriter, James Humes, and he said, the art of communication is the language of leadership. And as I thought about that, and I started thinking about, you know, the critical nature of communication for a leader, I was reminded of a proverb that says, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Mm -hmm. and, and that just, whenever I, I, I read or hear that proverb, I'm thinking about this beautiful black, like a matte black background with this apple that's golden that, and, and the leaves and the branches might be silver. And it just, the the apple just jumps out of the page at you it's 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 like inviting it's not obnoxious it's not obtrusive but yet it just it's in this wonderful golden warmth draws you in mm -hmm. and i thought it, to me that's a perfect example of what communication from the perspective of a leader should be you know are we too often i think we 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 sell ourselves short or we sell our team short when it comes to our communicating, we just like blurt it out and get it out there. Mm -hmm. when, when we really should be crafting our communications in such a way that it invites the listener in. And, and it's, again, it's not brash. It's not crass. It's, it's inviting. It's warm. It's fitting. It, it meets the needs of that moment. And, and if you think about it with communications, I can't think of any time when it really is okay to have it be crass maybe mm -hmm. fire get out type of thing you know uh not you're fired but there's a fire in the building and we need to leave but other than that all other communications if if the objective is to exchange an idea or a message it should be crafted in the best way possible mm -hmm. so one of the things that um i you know i do a lot of teaching on communication and one of the things that all of us need to remember, those of us in, in I was going to say in leadership, all of us, we are always on stage. There is not a waking moment when we are not communicating. And you say, wait, if I'm just sitting there by myself or, or I'm sitting there with my mouth shut, no, you're still communicating because only 7% of our communication are the words that we use. Mm -hmm. 
38% of tone of voice, 55% is body language. And so we, we really got to think about that. What, what, is our, what are our facial expressions communicating? Um, I have a problem in that if I am relaxed, I look angry. <laughs> and, and my wife will say that. You know, you just look angry. I said, I'm not angry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but when I'm relaxed, I look angry. So sometimes I actually like fake a smile. Mm-hmm. And then they might think, what's wrong with that simple guy? He's just got this silly grin on his face. But I just, I literally sometimes just force a, f- a smile so that I don't look like I'm completely clueless or, or angry type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever had any, any um, communication blunders? via text, email, or something? Well, as you mentioned, right, so 38% of communication is tone of voice and 55, you said, right, for body language. So Yeah, 55 for body language. Those things really can't be communicated through email or right. text message. I mean, I guess now we have emojis and um, right. it, we've got the, you can bold something or underline something or italicize sure. something in an email. Um, but there, there can be a, some miscommunication there, um, Mm -hmm. where something just maybe seems, um, how do I say this? Like someone might think you're upset with them because you didn't use, used a, used a period and not an exclamation point. Um, (laughs) or if you, you know, maybe it came across as direct, but instead of exactly, on top of sounding direct, it also sounded like um, an order. Right. So right. I think it's really important that we, uh, of course, that's how we uh, we need to communicate through technology sometimes, but also maintain relationships with people in face to face or over the phone um, so that they they know your communication style a little bit better. Right, right, right. You know, if and if you think about that, the the. 93% is nonverbal. Mm-hmm. It, it has nothing to do with words. Um, we had this scenario when I was at Selflock where if in our ERP system, you had to have the cap locks on on your <laughs> computer. So I would go from yeah. just typing an email or typing something in our ERP system, and then all of a sudden I go and I type an email to somebody, <laughs> and oh my goodness, they're, they're thinking that I'm so upset. Like, no, I didn't mean to boldface all, or have all that capitalized. It just happened. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I, I think we, we really, you brought up a good point there. Don't just write the email. Pick up the phone and call somebody. Mm-hmm. Get up out of your chair. Go across the hall to someone else's office and have a conversation. Especially because if it's we, something complex or important, exactly. you know, it's, if it's not, if it's not straightforward, right? there needs to be increased communication. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I think too, the, this, this, uh, you know, emails, I, I remember once sending an email about our customer service rep to our GM when I was plant manager. Mm-hmm. but accidentally sent it to the customer service rep Ooh. instead of the GM. <laughs> now, Joel was the best customer service guy we ever had. In fact, he retired three times mm-hmm. because he retired and I asked him to come back. He retired again. I asked him to come back. And and he was very gracious about it and probably realized that, you know, it was, it, well, everything I wrote was true, mm-hmm. you know, and I think he just needed and you know what? So the lesson learned there was I should have just gone to Joel. Right. What was the point in going to the to the GM? And the GM, I don't know if the GM ever knew. I think I finally said to him once, I said, guess what, Dan? <laughs> I sent this email to Joel instead of you, but, but we fixed the problem. <laughs> you know, and, and so maybe that's a good, this is a good transition point for, yeah. for me to talk in, uh, to speak into some of the things we need to think about. Mm-hmm. So I jotted down a few notes here. You know, number one, it was we're always on stage. So you can't not communicate. And I know I just gave you a double negative. Um, always start your communications with empathy. You know, why would the person be doing what they're doing? If I, I, need, to, I need to start my communication, I guess I'm assuming here this might be a difficult conversation. Put yourself in their shoes. Mm-hmm. Even if it's not. So um, I, I did a teaching this week 
on the significance of recognition in leadership and knowing be empathetic about to toward the person you're recognizing is this a person that loves public recognition mm -hmm. or are they a person that doesn't like public recognition right you know um my 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 lovely wife would hate public recognition she just i know that mm -hmm. so if i would if i would recognize her publicly by doing something you know sending flowers to her work type of thing would be something that's embarrassing to her. So I, I know don't do that. She mm -hmm. wants the flowers in private type of thing. So you need to know that. Um, and then I, I timing is everything. Um, is it not every communication has to happen as immediately as we think it does. Mm -hmm. The flip side of that is don't wait if it's something that does need to be addressed. So you really need to think about what is the timing of this communication. Uh, if I have to have a difficult conversation with someone, you know, I, some people say, well, do it on a Friday just before they leave. Well, no, because you can't, don't have time to correct any misunderstandings. Right. They're going to stew about it all weekend. So think about, do I, maybe I still do it toward the end of the week, but I want to do it in such a way that I have the balance of the day to make sure that they didn't misunderstand something. Mm -hmm. um, and I have another note here, the emotional factor. Not theirs, yours. Are you in the right frame of mind to have the conversation? Have you thought through what you what you want to say, and are, can you say it in a way that is void of any emotion, kind of thing? Um, and then I have a note here, what I call the environmental factor. So, emotionally, where are they? Um, are they, or is it is it a situation that you can have this conversation immediately, or do you need to go to a more quiet location? You know what's the what's the mood of your team? If you're gonna if you're gonna communicate to your team, is this the right time to communicate to the team? Um, is it the right, picking the time in a meeting to have that communication with your team? You know, if you're gonna say something critical to to your team, my guess is at the beginning of a meeting where you want to address a bunch of other things, it's not the best time to do it. It might be better to have that critical, instructive type of thing after you've accomplished other business details that you you want people to pay attention to um i've i've messed up so many meetings by the way i started meetings because i didn't think about my my communications um another one that i that i like to talk about when i do my communications training is have you connected with the person so that you can have the communication mm -hmm. like do you have a relationship with them that allows you to really dig deep in a communication where we're going to have a behavior change, you know, or where we want to communicate some, some inspirational thing. If it's, if we're trying to inspire them to try something new. Uh, I, I recently did a 360, um, that, that was the worst 360 I have ever done in my life. Mm. It, it, it was so bad that I was actually depressed. Wow. When when I got done, I got home and I just said to my wife, this was awful. And then the problem was the next morning I had to do the summary. And it was like reliving it. Mm -hmm. and, and the whole reason why it was so bad was this individual's communication style. Mm -hmm. This individual believed that they should inspire and motivate people to action by intimidation. Yeah. And I, you know, and I listened to eight people talk about how horrible it is in that environment. Mm -hmm. And it literally is the way this individual communicates. So I'm hopeful that this individual, when they see the assessment, can will react appropriately and say, wow, I really need to change, rather than dig their heels in and say, well, this is the way I get results. You know, well, no, it's not the way you get results. That's the way you get people to leave. So do you have any examples of good communicators or bad communicators? Um, I mean, I think I do a lot of communicating, right? Because I work for MAFME. I communicate with our members yep. on the whole. I communicate one-on-one -on -one with our staff. Um, and I'm also in a unique position because I do work from home. So right. outside of certain events or special meetings, I primarily communicate over the phone or through email, 
um, sometimes even text message. So mm-hmm. automatically body language is just about out for me. Anytime I'm right. communicating with, with staff, um, I talk with my hands a lot. So no one's seeing that. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that there is an individual that I work with on our magazine that, um, she's on the publishing end and, mm. um, she is a fantastic communicator and it makes working with her on such an important project. So great. I think what makes her such a good communicator is that she is direct, but not in like a orderly way. Just, it's just, you know, here's what's going on. Here's what you needed to do. And I can be the same way with her. Um, But I think the reason why we communicate well together is that we have set those expectations for our working relationship. Um, We do know we have met each other before. And once we met each other, I felt like that really helped a lot, too, because we were able to learn each other's just a little more about each other, see the body language, the tone and understand how each other works. Um, Yep. And so I think that's been like critical for us moving forward is just being direct, managing expectations and um, communicating frequently too. I think that's important. Like never, we never assume, we never just assume like if I put something in a Dropbox, because we use Dropbox often to share files, I always make sure to say like I did, I put these in Dropbox. I'm not going to rely on Dropbox to hopefully send her an automated message saying marissa put this in dropbox like i make sure i say that and also so she knows like it was wednesday when i put it in because i'll say yeah i put it in today and so i think that leaves you know no room for assumption which is important right that's great so it's so you're managing the expectations up front yeah yeah absolutely um and if it's something that is urgent i just pick up the phone and call her or if it's something oh, that. that's too complex, if, if it's some kind of big design change that I can't just put in bullets, I just mm-hmm. pick up the phone and, and it's it's easy. Um, as far as like bad communication, um, I mean, I think it. The first thing it's like if it's if it's a broken relationship if you don't have um if you don't trust the other person or if um you just don't know each other well like i think that can can cause some communication issues and so like you said kind of having that connection before you start communicating really helps uh i'm trying to think i mean i don't know i try not to focus on on bad communication i as a communications professional i really try to find a way to make all of the communication good whether i don't know i like to meet people where they are so that but i mean do you have do you have one to share that might be better than mine i i I do so i you you i had jotted down a note when you were talking and you kind of nailed it when you um you said you know the communicators communicate where you are Mm -hmm. so to speak and 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 that's really the case Bad communicate. You know, I've been around communicators that, well, they didn't speak with you; they talked to you. Mm. You know, and so bad communicators. It's all about them. Mm-hmm. Um, when they when they ask you to do something, they don't ask; they tell you, mm-hmm. and they find they they seem to have a need to tell you why they're the boss. Or that because they're the boss, you need to go do this. And and great communicators never have to tell you why you should do what they're asking you to do. Mm-hmm. They find a way to draw you in. Um, they it's it's never about them. It's always about what's good for the organization. If they if they're coming to give you direction, they do it in such a way that you you want to do it when you're done. When they're done sharing it with you, they, they, again, it's like, it's like this picture. They draw you in. They've, they've honed their communication as an art. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I've, I've actually watched people try to give direction 
and it comes across as commands, you know, like a battalion going into battle. Mm -hmm. When all it was was we need some instructions for the day. And the people feel intimidated. The, the people feel like they're, they're just tools being used by someone to accomplish an objective. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is that these individuals only get compliance. They don't get people's hearts. Right. You know, they'll get obedience, but only when the person's there watching. And you contrast that to the person that can sell you on the why something should be done. And, and I actually had a, I may have shared this once in, a, in, in one of our podcasts. I had a coaching client that was having problems with their team. And I said, you know, well, did you explain why they should do that? And, and he said, no, why should I explain why? I'm the boss. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, if we were in the military, and he was former military, and we need to take that hill, I don't explain why. I just say take that hill. And I just very calmly looked at him and said, you're not in the military. Right. When we're, you know, and if you established a great connection with a person and you've established a great relationship and you've made a connection at the heart level, you can get away with saying, this has to happen now and nobody second guesses you. Mm -hmm. They just do it. So the, um, I want to touch on something here too. Um, I think that a lot of leaders have missed the, un missed the opportunity to become inspirational communicators. You know, Ronald Reagan was known as the great communicator. He made us feel good. He got a country to rally around his ideas because he connected them back to us. You know, he, he again, he made us feel good about who we were. And, and if you want your, your team to do something, you have to make them feel good about who they are. Uh, one of the best communicators... I mean, I loved Reagan. I, I, I know this will sound really geekish, but I used to literally make recordings of Reagan's State of the Union addresses. <laughs> I know that's weird. You know, um, I'm not surprised. The other, <laughs> <laughs> the other great communicator. So not because, and people are gonna say, there he goes. He's just one of these ultra conservative right wing. No, the other person that I thought was a fantastic communicator was Mario Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo's mm -hmm. dad, when he was governor. Mm -hmm. I disagreed profoundly with a lot of his philosophies. But what an amazing communicator, because again, these two individuals would draw you into their conversation. It wasn't like they were giving a speech. They were having a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. Another amazing communicator is John Maxwell. And, if, and they've actually mapped out John's communication style. Where and, and any one of us can learn this. It, you know, one of the things I, I put in my article that my post that was released this morning was it's not just a gift. Communication is a skill that you can hone. You can really practice it and get good at it. You go to where the people are, you find ways to draw them in with with either humor or statistics or stories. People really want to hear the story that you that you want to tell and you pick a story that they can relate to uh, one of the things that john is a master at is working a room before he starts to give his talk he'll introduce himself to people he asks the people who they are he asks them why they're there and then he gets that information before he does it like if you want to hire him to come do a talk at your organization He'll spend a significant amount of time on the phone with you weeks before the event to learn as much as he can about your organization and your needs so that mm -hmm. when he brings his stuff, he's still teaching his principles, but he makes them fit to your organization. And, and we can do that as leaders with our teams. Figure out where they are. Figure out what they're struggling with. You know, figure out if we have to have a conversation with an employee we're trying to change a behavior. We're trying to improve something. We need to know enough about their life to connect what we're saying to them and make it relevant. And when we do, we've crafted this picture, this piece of art that draws the listener into the image. And then we can really communicate. So I don't know if that makes sense. It does to me, mm -hmm. but... I guess our listeners will save him. Just slow down when you're going to speak. 
think of apples of gold and pictures of silver? And how can I craft a piece of art that just happens to be communication? And beware of the fact that we're always on stage. Mm-hmm. Somebody's always looking. And, and I created so much stress in organizations that I managed and ran because I was not careful enough as to how I looked to people when I walked through the place. So that's my talk on communication. Great. And I, and I love the examples that, that you gave, too, of managing that expectation mm-hmm. from the beginning. Because that will save so much. And, you know, and, and like you said, too, when, when there's something that's important and time sensitive, you pick up the phone to call this person. You don't just send an email and wonder why somebody didn't get back to you yet. Right. You know, we're all, in, we're all ready for this instant communication, which is dangerous. Mm-hmm. Because, okay, so somebody didn't get back to me. Are they angry with me? No, they just thankfully don't have their phone glued to their hand. <laughs> so. So what are we doing next week? So next week, since I am going to be on vacation, we thought we would start, like we said we would, with some interviews. Yes. So you will be talking with um, a couple of people that are involved with our pathway, various pathways programs. Exactly. And, um, we, since we'll be celebrating our first job signing day with PEB, Oh. That is so exciting, too. Yeah. I love that job signing. It's just like athletes signing with a team. Yeah. We got young people signing with a team. So it's we awesome. We will have one of the new hires there. Great. And he'll be talking about his experience. And then the job signing day will be on June uh, oh, 12th? What's, I'll believe you. I don't what's know. What's the I don't, Wednesday? Let me... <laughs> it's a 12th. It's the 12th. June 12th. Yes. Yes. Okay, that Good. is it. Yes. Now, are we going to... Do you know if they're going to have coverage of that somehow so that we can have pictures and celebrate that? Yes, we definitely will have pictures that Good. will go up on the website. Um, sometimes we do get media coverage from okay. the local news stations. So, uh, we, you know, we hope that we will have someone there. Good. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. So that's... So I'm, I'm so excited about doing this interview next week. Yeah, I'm looking forward I, to I listening forward to, to it. it. I think it's going to be awesome. Great. Any special plans for the weekend? So you said you're on vacation. Yeah. So you're leaving soon? Uh, tomorrow, yeah. So by tomorrow, the, okay. By the time this you know, airs, I guess I'll be, on, be, va- I'll be on vacation. <laughs> You'll be on vacation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So uh, looking forward to some time with my husband's side of the family, and we will be meeting, we'll be meeting our nephew that was born in March. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, in, enjoy your time off, and Thank you. you'll have to give us our feedback as to how well we communicated in our next <laughs> podcast. Oh, I sure will. All right. With that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. Next Page.